we have seen young black people and even older black people be pulled over for simple traffic stops sure. and they're not here anymore. Well, you know, we see a black person like in Florida, Charles Kinsey, laying on the ground with his hands up. He gets shot. Yep. I mean, well, how, you know why everyone was so outraged about that? that? Well, here, so that's the one example. We've talked about that on the show. Um, you know why people got so outraged about that? Because it's so uncommon. Everything you've just said in nearly every instance, someone being pulled over, they're not pulled over by a simple traffic stop. For, what was, uh, I forgot, what was the, the name, uh, we just forgot of the uh, the guy who was pulled over with his uh, CPL Castile? permit. C- Castell. Yeah, it wasn't a simple pullover. It was a series of poor decisions and could be an officer, again, not applying intent, who's made mistakes. We've talked about that. And this is what happened. The idea that someone's being pulled over for a speeding ticket or a parking ticket and they're lighting them up like the 4th of July is not true. What I'm saying is they, they know who to do that to. And unfortunately, when you're poor in this country, you can be victimized. And, you know, there's a, a block of people within our in everybody's community, not just our community, who are poor, who are in bad situations. And if you have cops who are crooked, who are not for the right thing then they would take advantage of that situation. I've met some decent cops right here in Houston. Well, but, yeah, but, you, to but you've made blanket state. statements about police officers, and this is, this is the message right now. Um, uh, we can talk about well, Chicago. The, the case, message Steve, right now I is I have if, a video, Stephen. Well, let, 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 let me make my, my point, because I was talking after you, I, I gave you the floor. When you say those things and you have kids who are raised and believe them, they are less compliant. When they believe that Mike Brown's hands were up, don't shoot, and it's not true. When they believe that Corin Gaines, for example, was simply protecting her child when she was a child abuser, and it's not true. When they believe, for example, in Milwaukee, they don't understand that the guy in Milwaukee aimed uh, a loaded gun at a black officer who shot him. Most of these people don't know this. Uh, we talk about the mainstream media. That's why. They, they don't talk about it once the story's moved on. When they believe these things, and, and, and representatives like you with big YouTube channels go out and say, Police officers treat them like gang members. Um, they are killers. They will kill you. Well, guess what? That child is going to be deathly afraid of officers, including whether they're black, white, Asian, as you've said, and less likely to comply. And that's why we see sky... And, and, and then police officers don't want to police those areas. So that's why we see directly correlated to Black Lives Matter and the modern segregation movement coming from the black left, not you, the black left, skyrocketing crime in Baltimore, skyrocketing crime in Chicago. Police don't want to show up. They're afraid of a lawsuit, and they're afraid of getting shot. But a lot of young black people right now, whether it's Black Lives Matter, whether it's, I mean, pick any, whether it's white guy Sean King, I'm sure you have opinions on a guy like that. They're pushing this narrative that cops are out there and that you're a danger just for being a black kid. It's not true, and if you get enough kids to believe it, well, now you see a bigger racial divide than we've seen in, in decades. Well, you know, like I say, when, when it comes to my videos, that's why, you know, sometimes I'm like, I've done videos defending police officers when I say, hey, like he was right. And, and, and sometimes I've got attacked for it because. Sure. But so when you say accurate information, I've done videos where, you know, I've made a mistake, had to turn around and, and redo it and go in on the person that, that was making up some false stuff. If you falsify something, I find out I'm going to go in on you because I get pissed off that I defended you. Right. That, that's how I operate. So, you know, and that's why my audience is growing is because people of just people, that's black people know that I would tell them the truth and I tell them, look, go research it. Maybe I got it, you know, part of it, not right or whatever. Let me know. I'm doing social commentary as well with that. And this is how, you know, we feel, or at least I feel on some situations uh, that's happening here in this country. My thing is we want it changed. I don't want nobody to feel like they're being targeted. I don't want nobody to feel like open season. I don't want nobody to feel like that. I want everybody to live in peace. But but there's That's more riots. There's more riots than there have ever been in I, our lifetime. I agree. More I agree. violence. I agree with you. And right. it's crazy. So I agree. It's does more Black riots. Lives Matter and this idea bear some responsibility for the racial divisiveness in the country because they're inaccurately telling young black people that they're at risk uh, and they've created a rebound effect? Is there some culpability for leaders in the black community, Black Lives Matter, and sometimes your rhetoric? Well, you, I was you even seeing my last Black Lives Matter video or saw an interview I did with a lady that from Ferguson. So if you did, you probably wouldn't ask me those questions. But, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement started off very good um, in a lot of ways because some things that need to be addressed. And I, I know some people personally in Black Lives Matter, they're just good people. They want to see some changes happen. Um, and I've seen them do things peacefully. I've recorded them myself. Yeah, I, I've been I, know, their, I get it. But right now, again, we rallies. have to take well, the well, Steve, let, me, let, me, let me finish my point. What happened is, and, I, and, and you can go look at my videos with this, you have a lot of white liberal groups that's come in and has given money to people in Black Lives Matter in the national uh, forefront 
uh, George Soros Open Society Foundation gave him $33 million. The black community haven't seen a dime of that. That's the stuff I'm calling out about the national people. You know, Ford Foundation, I forgot the other one, to give him another hundred. Uh, George million. Soros is an evil bastard. You know, so I'm calling this stuff out because I'm for the community at the end of the day. And I said about Black Lives Matter, I'm fine with you protesting, but I need to see action. Because if I had to leave Black Lives Matter, I'd probably be shot because we wouldn't be screaming no more. We, are, we, we may make one protest and we're going to do a Dr. King. We're about to have the strongest economic boycott they ever seen. And we would get things changed by policy because the only thing they understand in this country is money. And that's how I would do it. It'd be peaceful. Nobody be breaking nothing, destroying nothing. That's what Dr. King said. But like, to do. Boy, like boycott what? Boycott any any entity. If 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 you feel that, for instance, instead of doing a riot and they say in Ferguson, this is how I would have said to do it. You go you go to the mayor. You tell him, okay, since your police is out of control, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to shop here in this city until you get them in control and stop doing the uh, ticketing for revenue thing. And just stick to it until they make changes in their policy. And you shop at the cities around there. Go to the other grocery stores in other cities. It would take a sacrifice sure. until they change. And they will change. What would happen out of that? It's peace for protest. But what if, policy, let me ask you this, Hold though. on, Stephen. Well, hold on, because you've gone on for a while. Let me ask you, this is important. What if the city of Ferguson, or like the city of Baltimore, right? Black mayor, mm -hmm. black city council, uh, black judge. I mean, all black, black. So it wasn't like this idea of just white people without accountability. What if they came back and said, Okay, but here are the statistics. Our police are actually better than the national average. They actually are not killing young black people. And they've been so places like Ferguson or Baltimore, because a lot of them maintain that. Um, again, you can't do it just based on a couple of stories. What if statistically that's not true? How do you pick who to boycott? Well, you basically you're going to do it off of this pattern. For instance, like if they wanted to boycott, um, let's say Freddie Gray, instead of doing what they did in Baltimore, right? The people say it's wrong, the riot and all this other stuff. I don't try to advocate that. I say, okay, well, just boycott. Boycott, choose businesses, choose the boycott in the city, whatever. Boycott financially. What, what could anybody say? See, that's the problem I have because when I mention this, just do an economic boycott. You're not destroying businesses. You're not committing crimes. No. You're not throwing you're rocks right. at police. You're not doing any of that. Right. And nobody can stop you from holding money in your pocket. Especially in those cities where the police are majority black. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> that don't mean nothing. So, like, what they about the slight, officers of Freddie Gray, right? Three Was it three yeah. out of the six? What do we say? Yeah, are they, they, are they yeah, self-hating black you, people? Are they racists? Just because you're black don't mean you're for black people. <laughs> just like they get... Oh, that you, sounds pretty racist to say. So, how for you to racist? say... How do you get to tell someone if they're full black or not? I didn't say full black. I said just because you're black doesn't mean you're for black people. Oh, they That's said what? full black people. It sounded like you oh, said full I, black I don't, people. I can't determine who's full and who's not. Okay. Well, what if they're for black people by policing the neighborhoods and joining their police? And if getting rid of criminals community, like Freddie gonna, Gray. If they're doing the, the... Well, Freddie Gray just saw them and took off running. I don't know why he ran, but he took off running. Nobody knows why he ran. You can't ask him now. But he, but he ran when he saw well, So this wasn't his it. first encounter with the police. So that's probably why he ran. This was a, a mm -hmm. long-time kid who was up to no good, who had had several run-ins, and he probably ran. Maybe he had drugs on him that he tossed. Who knows? But the whole point is you don't just run from police who aren't even shaking you down just because. I think we agree on that. So, again, it was represented as a kid who was just slammed in a paddy wagon. It wasn't true. And the reason there haven't been the charges is because it's not true what happened there. And the officers... Uh, you know, you have half the officers who were black. Maybe they are for black people. They just disagree with people like you, and they see the way of serving the black community is to join the police, to make a difference, and to get rid of people who are uh, people, whether it's drug dealers, what, what you, criminals what who are a cancer people, to the black community. What, what do you mean people like me? I, I like to hear that. What do you mean by you that? You said just because they are black doesn't mean they're for black people. So yeah, what that's if, true. So what if the that's officers true. in the and Freddie Gray situation who are black, they are for black people, but... Unlike you saying maybe they're not, for, what if they are, but their way of being for black people instead of criticizing the cops or painting them in a negative light is saying, I'm going to join the police because I think there's a crime problem in the black community and I want to get rid okay. of it. I did a video when I, I asked the, um, the one of the assistant police chiefs right here in Houston, mm -hmm. face to face. And the one thing I, we asked for, a lot of even the activists asked for, we want, wanted to see more black police officers join the force and police the black communities. This is things that, that's been brought up. So it's not that we're so anti-police. We want my diversity on the police force. 
and we would like to see there, them there, that's not, the not, and I appreciate that you did, but that is not true in the black community. I tell you what, I have friends who are police officers. There is no well, one. Well, you, you, well there's you no one in great. You and I both know this. There's no one in greater danger than a black police officer in a city like Baltimore or Detroit. We know that they have a target on their back. People who are considered snitches. Come on, we know this right now in the black. That's a real problem. People are not complying with officers. People vilify them. People don't. They see you as an Uncle Tom if you join the police force. And a big part of that is because we've painted them as gang members for the law or as killers, right? See, it comes full circle. Yeah, it, comes, it definitely comes full circle because when you have the bad, quote unquote, bad apples that's in the police force, instead of them getting fired, that way they messing up the integrity of the police department, they're allowed to stay. And that's really the problem. Like the police problem could be fixed overnight if they just get all the bad ones out of the police force. And then you have some police uh, that actually will go to the communities, talk to people. You know, of course, the media is not going to really show that. But, but what about like Darren Wilson try- asked? Darren Wilson, with, for example, he's Darren Wilson with Mike Brown. Darren Wilson asked to be in a black community because he wanted to help. He was actually offered to be in a wealthier. He said, no, no, I want to be in this community because I want them to see a police presence and realize that we are their friends and we want to help them. Look at those people with Corn Gaines who specifically reached out, who tried to talk with the kids and be nice. The point is, you can't say who's a bad apple. We know they weren't bad apples. We know Darren I've Wilson wasn't said, a bad apple. I've never said we know he was f- a bad apple. I was saying that every job, no matter what it is, you know who the good people are and who the people that's trying to skate by doing so they have no business. I have people that I know personally, you know, within the Houston Police Department, they even know. But if you open your mouth, it causes more problems than what it's worth. And that's what I'm saying. If you want to and protect the integrity of police officers and the, the entity, If the American public would see cops, you know, arresting cops that they catch brutalizing someone or cops, you know, turning other cops in and they they, they put themselves out there and say, look, you know, we don't want this. We put this out there. They will be looked at more so as like, you know, the the respect would uh, come back because they say this is no place for crooked cops to be at. That's why people wanted the body cam thing. I, I support that. I support uh, certainly body cameras, um, you know, wherever municipalities can afford it. I think we can find some common ground there. I, I hate to I think we, the federal we, government needs to pay for it. That's how I feel about it. They I, need to pay for it. I think, uh, well, we don't have a ton of time left. Um, yeah, I think, listen, I think, you're, but they are. I mean, we, we did a Black Lives Matter uh, myth debunk where we went through, what is it, 18, something like 18 cases. And there were many instances in which, where, again, errors were made and the police officers were charged and they're fired. Usually if it's something really drastic, they're, they're charged and fired. This idea that there's no accountability, um, it's, it's, it's not statistically true. And uh, you even look at some police officers who were going by protocol and they became a national news story and their lives are ruined. So I agree with you. Get rid of them. I, I'm far bit for me to protect police unions, but I, I don't. I think the vast majority of police officers right now. Uh, are certainly not taking part in in some play to to be shooting black people in record numbers, and the statistics don't bear that out. Phil, uh, thank you very much. We, we, one more time, well, this will either go on our channel or your channel. Uh, tell people the best place to find you. Yes, you can find me on the Advice Show TV uh, on YouTube. You can check me out on Twitter at Advice Show Media, also on Instagram at Advice Show Media. I'll respond one way or another. Well, I appreciate that, that you're accessible with your fans. Hey, one last thing as, as just a lighthearted way to leave it. Did you see the outrage with the Ellen Generous Usain Bolt Photoshop? Yes. Did you think that was racist? I didn't really look at it that way, but other people pointed out and saying about the history of that and all this other stuff. I didn't cover it because I'm like, eh, that's kind of how I felt about it at the time. Yeah. Well, I just bring that up because it seems we're getting to a point where People are just so easily offended and looking for it everywhere. Um, but Ellen is a comedian, and I know she do silly stuff. So if she didn't have a history of doing stuff like that, I'd probably think more into it. But Ellen has always been just silly. Well, it started with Phelps, too. You know, the meme of being on Phelps' back. And then the Usain Bolt thing was pretty common. Um, I was just asking. I was, I was just wondering because that was a big uproar and, and people, you know, all over the place talking about they're looking for a, a boogeyman sometimes when there isn't one. Phil. Thank you very much, sir. This is the end card. People can click wherever with these magic boxes. You know how this works on YouTube. If they want to watch other videos. And, uh, yeah. If you like this video, subscribe. Because that's how you support this channel. And we're not even charging you. If you don't, we are going to personally hire Nickelback to play in your backyard. It's going to be in a loop like a morphine drip. Don't make us do it. We don't want to do it. But we will.